everybody. Uh, I know it's been a while since we did a, uh, a verse of the week type thing, and this isn't quite verse of the week, but um, it's a particular passage uh, of the Bible, Romans chapter 14, that I'd like to have a look at. Um, and the reason why I'd like to have a look at this passage is because I think it's going to be really important for us um, in the coming months. Um, along with every other church, I suppose, uh, we at St Thomas's are going to have a lot of decisions to make over these coming months about um, how we move back to worshipping together, how we um, work together in terms of our gatherings as a church. We've now got the, the road map um, and so we can see what the different steps along the way uh, are going to be. But that doesn't mean that it's obvious exactly how we're going to be able to manage our uh, Sunday worship and even our midweek outreach groups. Um, there are going to be still quite a few restrictions in place uh, for a while. Uh, and how can we best run our children's groups and how can we best accommodate uh, all the different people who want to be coming to worship when we may be limited in numbers for quite a long time? Um, and how can we accommodate those who are less uh, comfortable with coming into the building or with being in a place where there's too many other people? Uh, there's lots of things to uh, think about there. As well as, um, as we've been discussing over the past few months, not just assuming that we want to simply get back to the place that we were um, before lockdown happened, but maybe that God is saying some different things to us about how we uh, worship as we gather together and about what we want to be doing uh, as a church and where he's leading us. So there's those important decisions and discussions to be taken. And then added into that for St Thomas's, of course, we're in a situation where we're very delighted about this, where we've been able to employ uh, Claire Smith uh, in January to be our building project leader. And uh, she's already been uh, consulting across the congregation, um, which is great, and hearing people's um, ideas about what kind of things we'd love to see and we believe God is kind of saying to us about how we want this building to be used uh, for the glory of God. Um, but that too is going to require changes and decisions and discernment as we go forward and big decisions to be made. But I think it's clear that in both of those situations in terms of how we come back from lockdown and in terms of what we do uh, with our building project these are, um, in a sense, they're not essentials of the Christian faith. Um, I could be a Christian with, uh, full of faith, uh, seeking to be led by the Holy Spirit and believe that the church should have pews. Or I could be a Christian full of faith and led by the Holy Spirit and believe that the church should not have pews. Um, you know, these things are not essential to our faith. Or in the same way, I could believe we need to move back to having uh, worship in the building with as many people as possible as soon as possible. Or I could believe that uh, we should be keeping the numbers smaller and maybe having multiple uh, opportunities for people to come on a Sunday. And again, either of those opinions uh, could be held by somebody who is a faithful Christian. So they're not um it's not that one thing is right and one thing is wrong one thing is godly and one thing is ungodly uh, but we've got to decide uh, on these kinds of things over the coming months and we need to know how we go about making those decisions and in romans chapter 14 paul writes some amazingly helpful um verses to this church in rome which was uh, having its own discussions and disagreements about certain issues. And what basically happens in Romans 14 is that Paul delineates between, defines between uh, two groups of people in the church. One he calls the weak, one he calls the strong. And interestingly, he does say in this chapter that he's on the side of the strong, that he, is, he, believe, he agrees with their, their, their position. He thinks they're right. Um, but the way that the strong and the weak are to relate to each other is absolutely crucial. 
and it might be crucial for us over these coming uh, months of decision and change. So in this particular situation, it seems that what we have is a group of people who probably have been uh, converted from Judaism, Jewish believers, and who hold that some of those customs of the Jews are very important. So for ex uh, in particular here, um, the eating only of kosher food, only of clean food and not of unclean meat. Um, and then also whether certain days are holy and special and certain days aren't or whether all days are the same. So there's those who seem to have come probably from a Jewish background who think it's really important to keep holy days and who think it's really important only to eat kosher food and not food that's been potentially sacrificed to idols in the Gentile um, uh, situation in Rome. And then there's the other people, maybe they are Gentiles who've converted to Christianity, or maybe like Paul, they're Jews who've come to understand that these things are not very important. And they, their consciences allow them, because of their faith, to have liberty in these matters, to eat whatever food is put in front of them, and to to not think that certain days are more important than others. And Paul says the, the strong, the people who think actually everything is okay here, are correct. He, he believes that those people are right. But he says the way that these people relate to each other is absolutely crucial and far more important than the issues themselves. And I think that's going to be really important for us as we go forward, because actually the decisions that we make are in themselves going to be only peripheral to the glory of God. And whether or not we love one another and we really seek to honour and glorify God is going to be so much more important than the specific decisions that are taken over the coming months. And so um, Paul says in this chapter, what's absolutely crucial is that people do not condemn or despise each other because they hold different opinions. The strong should not condemn the weak for choosing only to eat vegetables. And the weak should not despise the strong for choosing to eat meat that they think is unclean. He says it's so important that the people involved recognise that their overriding responsibility is to love one another in this circumstance. And Paul gives certain reasons for this that are really very, very important for us to grasp as we think about how do we relate to each other in these coming uh, decisions that we'll be taking. One of the things that Paul says is remember that Christ died for every one of you. If you're Christians in the church, then Christ died for you. And that means that Christ accepts you, welcomes you. God welcomes you and he welcomes all of us. And the, the uh, chapter begins, welcome those who are weak in the faith. Paul says the attitude of the strong to the weak and indeed the weak to the strong must be to accept and to welcome one another because Jesus has died for all of us he loves us he welcomes us he couldn't have demonstrated that more clearly and so we've got to be prepared to live in that way Paul also says don't forget that we're each servants of the Lord we're servants of Jesus and he is the master we are responsible to him he's the one who's going to judge our actions and our decisions and we do not need to to think of ourselves as being other people's masters judging other people within our congregation because that's god's responsibility we're his servants so don't put yourself above your position remember that you are equally brothers and sisters children of God brought into his family through Jesus and that means that your primary responsibility is to love one another as brothers and sisters 
not to judge one another, not to get uh, th- feel that putting your opinion across as being more important is, is, is the aim, but to love one another, to serve one another, to be uh, recognising that we're equal together as God's children. And in terms of the, the actual uh, decisions that we make, Paul emphasises that what's really important here is our motive, is our heart, as is always the case as Christians. Whether you eat this food or don't eat this food, what matters is whether you do what you're doing in order to honour the Lord. You do it to the Lord, he says. Whether you um, think that, you know, whether the church has got pews in or not, it's whether you're using that building to honour the Lord that's important. You know, whether we have all age services or, uh, you know, services where the, the, the children are in different groups and we're, um, we're all together in the church as adults. Those kinds of things um, matter not very much at all, those decisions. What matters is whether we do what we do with a desire to honour the Lord. And so Paul's reminding us that it's what's in our hearts, it's our desire to glorify God that's going to be really important in the decisions that we take um, and it's very striking isn't it that Paul says even though he agrees with the strong he says the strong are right here you know everything is now clean everything is is allowed in terms of what we eat according to uh, Jesus Paul says this is right but he says The matters of eating and drinking are not important in comparison with the kingdom of God, in comparison with walking in the way of love. This is what's really important. So you can go along saying, well, I'm going to eat this and I'm going to eat that. Or, you know, I don't care whether there's um, people playing football in the sanctuary of the church building or not. Um, But if you are... um, not loving your fellow Christians by uh, going ahead and doing what you think can be done if you're trampling over them then that is not acceptable that's not the way to treat one another and in fact Paul says this is really serious people can be destroyed because we don't care about their their opinions maybe their conscience is oversensitive But if we don't care about that, then we might be destructive. We might trample people down. Uh, We might uh, cause them not to be built up as Christians, but to be shoved down. And that would be uh, a disaster. So we must hold that as being the most important thing, is that we are building one another up, that we're building up our church community and not tearing it down in the way that we go about making the decisions we need to make and acting um, out uh, on on the the changes that are coming over the the months to come. And um, I I think I would really encourage you to to be coming back to this passage, uh, maybe read it in various translations and see what God is saying to you about how you might be relating to others within the church. Uh, in these months to come. One final thing that Paul says, which I think is very interesting, he says, um, certainly, I mean, discussions are going to be helpful and important over these these coming uh, decisions that we have to make. We're going to have to discuss and discern together. But Paul does say this thing in verse 22 of chapter 14. He says, the faith that you have, he means about these matters, have as your own conviction before God in other words he seems to be saying this is you know whether you think you should eat this food or not is between you and God whether you think the church should you know build an extension on the right hand side is to some extent between you and God whether you like having all age worship or not is between you and God And what he's saying there, I don't think is you must never tell anybody what you think about these matters, but it probably is wise to ask yourself before you say, 
this is what I think about this particular issue. Is this going to be beneficial for me to say what I think about this? Do I need to speak out? Do I need to go public with my opinion on this particular thing? Or actually, might I be better just to keep it to myself for the time being? Because what we don't want is just for there to be endless arguments, endless debates about is this the best thing, is that the best thing. We're going to have to make some decisions and go for it. And basically rub along with one another. Make the best of it. One of the things that's been really striking to me in St Thomas's over the past seven or eight years has been that we've we've kind of mucked along together. I suspect in terms of Sunday worship, none of us have got exactly what we would want. <laughs> we probably all think, oh, a bit, wish it was a bit more like this, or wish it was a bit more like this, wish it was a bit more of this, or a bit less of this. But we've rubbed along together and we've loved each other and that is why I think we've honoured the Lord in what we've been doing. And so I really encourage you to stick with that kind of attitude. Think and pray about where we should be going, how we should be doing this. But um, recognise that you'll have to give and take over these coming months. We all will. And that in all that we do, let's try and honour the Lord. Let's try and glorify the Lord and let's love one another as brothers and sisters. Now I've just talked into a camera there for over 15 minutes so I'm sorry about that but I hope that some of that's been useful and that it's not been too long for you to take it in but have a look at Romans 14 and have a think about what uh, the Lord may be saying to you um, as we go through these coming months of change. Let's pray. Lord we really do thank you for your love of each one of us we thank you that you have welcomed us every one of us into your family as we trust in Jesus and we pray uh, as we make decisions over these coming uh, weeks and months about different issues that we will be gracious to one another that we won't seek to please ourselves but we'll seek to love one another for your glory Amen. Mm -hmm.